Hello, my name is Fabia. I work in the Diagnosis Product Support Team, and today I'm going to show you how to jumpstart your DIA analysis with Spectronaut. As soon as you have successfully installed Spectronaut, we recommend that you go under Global Settings and change the local search archive as well as the temporary directory to local destinations with enough free memory. We strongly recommend running Spectronaut locally, meaning having your run files, search archives, and temporary directories on a local drive. We also recommend that you convert your DIA runs into HTRMS files, a file format that was specifically developed for the fast processing of peptide-centric DIA analysis with Spectronaut. Before starting your analysis, make sure that you have your resource files available. On the databases, you can find our online repository. By simply right-clicking on a protein database, you can download the FASTA file and make it available in Spectronaut for all your analysis. You can do the same in the Genotology databases, where we set available gene annotation files for several organisms. If you choose an annotation file for your analysis, make sure that the gene annotation matches the FASTA identifiers. You can also import your own resources by clicking on the Import Action in the bottom left panel. Once we have all the resources, we are ready to start our analysis. If you don't have a spectral library yet, the first step in a peptide-centric approach is to generate one in the library perspective. By clicking on the action Generate Library from Pulsar, you can generate a library with our Spectronaut integrated search engine. A wizard will guide you through all the steps from peptide search to library generation. Upon successful completion, your library will appear in the left panel of the library perspective. Spectronaut offers several options for library exploration. An example, the library summary provides the number of precursors, peptides, and proteins compiled in the library. The precursor MZ plot shows the precursor MZ distribution covered by your library. The peptide modification plot shows how many peptides in your library carry post-translational modifications. If you are satisfied with your library, you can proceed with DAA data extraction. In the analysis perspective, you can set up a library-based DAA analysis, and you also have the option to run a library-free DAA analysis with Aretia. By clicking on any action, a wizard will open. First, you will select your DAA run, and assign a spectral library. You will then define your analysis settings. We have pre-made setting schemas that you can use to start your first analysis. You will then define your experimental conditions for post-analysis. If you already have a file for conditions set up, you can do so. By clicking on Finish, you will start the analysis. You can revise your analysis in the analysis perspective. By default, your runs will be organized by isolation window, precursor, and fragment ions. By right-clicking on the Experiment tab, you can group your runs differently, as well as save your experiment. Here, you also have different plotting options. The XIC graph, for example, shows you the MS1 and MS2 intensities across runs. The protein coverage shows the position of a precursor in the protein sequence and the confidence of the assignment. In the post-analysis, you get an overview of your analysis and, for instance, on data completeness as well as reproducibility of your measurements. You if you have performed statistical testing, Spectronaut will also generate a candidate's list. If you rather export your results, you can go under the report perspective and customize the report that best suits your downstream applications. I hope you found this video helpful in jumpstarting your Spectronaut analysis. For any questions, you can find the user manual in the above perspective and always contact us at supportedbiognosis.com. Thank you for watching.